Welcome back everyone to another episode of Let's Play Discworld. And when we last left off, uh, we were given our mission by our great leader, the Arch-Chancellor, to find a bunch of stuff mentioned in this book so that we can make a dragon detector. Well, the first item of which, that being the staff, is in the university and we have everything we need to get it. So let's get on with it, shall we? I do believe what we're looking for is in the dining room, which is here, I think. There's teeth marks all over this one. Must be the dining room. Indeed. This is the dining room. And it's probably the only one that Rincewind will get right. Looks like the faculty are having their dinner. What are they eating exactly? Ah, let's see. Wildebeest baked in a poodle's eye sauce. Newt's liver pate with pickles and cream. Ex senior angler legs in garlic butter. I do hope that door gives a clear run to the latrine. Ew. Did anyone actually eat that stuff? The heck was that? Well, I was going to talk to the faculty, but I imagine that, that noise is going to get in the way. Yes, thank you. That is the staff we need. Well, we might as well talk to this, uh, this wizard first. A very, very aged old wizard with a beard used mainly for collecting tobacco stains. So he chews tobacco, does he? Yeah, this is Windle Poons. Uh, as far as I know, he is the oldest wizard in the faculty. And I mean old, like old even by wizard standards. Yeah, in Discworld, wizards are quite long lived. Not sure if that's because of the magic they that they perform. Anyway, hey. let's talk to Windle. <laughs> a girl. What's a girl doing in here? I'm not a girl. Why are you? Why are you wearing a dress? It's a wizard's robe, not a dress. <laughs> I knew a girl's dress once. Splendid. Very good at pickling. Very good at pickling eels, she was. I see this is going to go in one of two directions. Well, I once knew a girl too, of course. Of course? Well, why are you of course? Young fellow like you, you ought to be out and about, exploring a world of adventure. Wine, women and pickles. Look. I am out and about. Well, you can't be too good at it if you're already off course, young air freshener. Look, no one's off course. I just use the phrase as a pleasantry, a manner of address. Oh, dear. Pickling? Oh, how fascinating. Pickled? Who's pickled? No one's pickled. You started it. I don't even like pickles. What? Oh, they were wonderful pickles. How dare you cast me in aspersions on them? Oh, no. Damn, I've, I've lost it. What were we talking about again? Um, pickles? What's pickled? What? Hmm? Uh, what do you mean? Well, the eels were pickled, weren't they? What? Pickled elves? Damn, there he is. I told them to lock that liquor cupboard. Go on, boy, get after them. No, no, pickles, not pickled. Pickles? Oh, try the kitchen. Get out. Stop wasting my time. Oh, dear. So, what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. That's just the point. And now young twerps like you think they can come in here, ravish our women and, and, and steal all our pickles. Steal? Now do I look like a thief? My stick. They all want my magic stick. So be off with you, you, you dastardly overcleaner. No, no, look. I don't want your wretched stick. So? So it's the pickles you're after then, is it? Hmm? You devilish young trouser. Well, I'm on to you, you know. I'm on to you, you young bookcase. Now look, this is not the problem that I wanted to address. It's not the problem I want to address either. Why am I even talking to this guy? He's, he's senile. Look, I just want to find somebody who can talk a little sense. Sense? Perfumes? Oh, I'll not have it. No, sir, I won't. 
dallying with women folk on the premises is against the rules. Otherwise, we'd, we'd, we'd all be doing it. You young bathrobe, I have you defrocked for this. Look, I haven't done a thing, honestly. What? Well, well, well uh, how can you be a man of the world if you've never sampled the finer things in life? <laughs> women, wizard staves, pickles. Well, if I go and do that, you said you'd defrock me. It won't do, it just won't do. Young tweezers like you coming in here and, and taking off their frocks, I, I won't stand for it. I, 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 this city is getting into, into a fine old pickle. Oh, please don't get started on the pickles again. Pickles? Well, don't eat pickles if you're wearing a dress. You'll stay in the hem. Why are you wearing a dress? All right, that's enough. This seems like a good cue to cease this whole silly conversation. Indeed. All right, let's get that staff, shall we? We need something to swap it with, namely, the broom. All right, here goes. Bingo, we've got the stick. Here, it's got a knob on the end. It's long clearly quite magical and it's got a knob on the end I'd safely say that that is the staff that we need right well before we leave let's talk to the rest of the faculty shall we who's this fellow would you believe he gets a full tenure for this a senior wrangler I think in the world of Discworld that's just somebody who sits there and does nothing that doesn't work would you believe he gets a full That doesn't work. Hmm. You're supposed to double click people to talk to them, but it seems like Rinsman doesn't want to. <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to ring one of these. Shame it isn't bell shaped. Uh, hint, hint. Uh, uh, uh. Alright, well, we can't talk to the senior wrangler, so let's try talking to the other members of the faculty. Uh, if I stand here, we should be able to get the entire conversation. Because they'll all speak uh, together in tandem. So we've got the lecturer in recent ruins, we've got the dean and the bursar. Let's talk to the lecturer first. Good day, sirs. Is it? <laughs> so you say. What with the bottom falling out of the tapioca market? He's off again, past the dried frog pills. Laugh away, you old boy valve. It's all this dragon business. That's what's doing it. Snatching tapioca out of the mouths of the deserving elderly. Dragons? Dragons in the town, a likely story. <laughs> Swamp dragons, he means? No, a real dragon, not one of those little marsh tiddlers. Poppycock, there's no such thing. Dragons only exist if you believe in them. I don't believe in them, they don't believe in me. So we're both happy. Actually, that's a point. When the Dean says that dragons only exist if you believe in them, that is 100% true. Belief is very powerful in Discworld, so if you think dragons exist, they do exist. The same goes for mythical creatures and gods, too. Another busy day in the faculty, gentlemen? We are cogitating. I hope I heard that right, said in a knowing tone of voice, nudge nudge. Cogitating, my lad, is that process by which the wise make space inside their minds for more ideas. You make more space for ideas by sitting on your backside sipping a cup of milky tea. Hit him. Hit him. My boy, ideas are normally sold by volume, not by weight. It's best to let them settle so you can find more room in the top. We have wisdom and you do not. For instance, this is the action of a clever man. What's so clever about writing down the word monkey? Uh oh. Wisdom, my lad, is never cheap. Well, I didn't know you were selling it by the pound. That was a terrible joke. That was awful. I mean, even the drum roll at the end there, that was just. that was just terrible. Excuse me, where might I go to find the patrician? Well. Don't be an idiot, boy. Just look for the palace. Is he approachable? Can you actually speak to him? Oh, yes. 
but he's a mean man with a word. Be careful if he uses sarcasm on you. And for heaven's sake, run for it if he resorts to... Ooh, irony. Yeah, the patrician is the ruler of Angmorpork. We'll see him later. Does this place always have to be this way? What way? Well, this way. It's chaos. It's... It's undisciplined. It's as if I'm thrashing about in a sea of questions, like like I'm screaming out against soul-destroying winds. Isn't that a mixed metaphor? I mean, there are times when I dream about just shaking this place by the neck until it starts talking sense. I have one like that too. What, really? Oh, yes. In one magic moment, I stride like an intellectual giant across the rooftops of the world, slicing through the Gordian wass's name of fuzzy thinking for all time. And then I have this other terrific dream, that I'm being smothered in fruit yoghurt and sucked up inside a whale. Thankfully, that's not my problem. So far, anyway, we can but hope. Indeed we can but hope. Looks like we've got a few other topics to talk about. We've got the luggage and the librarian. Look, does anyone know why this luggage keeps following me? Ah, that sapient pearwood that luggage is. There's no getting rid of it. It'll follow you everywhere. Sapient pearwood? They once used it to make containers for grave goods. I suppose someone hoped that you really could take it with you. <laughs> The chest is, in fact, the luggage. The luggage is made of sapient pear wood, and once it attaches itself to somebody, it will follow that person everywhere. Just like a little puppy. It is like a runaway suitcase, albeit one with lots of little pink legs. In this game, the luggage is a convenient storage device, not to mention a convenient homicidal maniac, should one be required. Yeah, that fellow will pop up a few times to just to explain a bit of lore of Discworld. And the conversation window's gone. But no, he's right, the, the chest is made from something called sapient pear wood, which is from a magic tree. Which gives the luggage its uh, its magical properties, like the fact that it's basically a, like, uh, like the suitcase from Fantastic Beasts, or the TARDIS from Doctor Who. Bigger on the inside. Not sure where it gets the legs from, though. Anyway, we've still got to talk about the librarian. Why is the librarian a monkey? Did you get the number of that donkey cot? He's not a... one of them. He's an orangutan. But it's the same thing! No, no, no. Your actual orangutan is one of the great apes, an aboreal denizen of the subtropical rainforest. If you ever want to go far in life, you must learn the value of proper nomenclature. Nomenclature? But what's the difference between calling him an orangutan or a monkey? In general terms, the difference is whether you keep your teeth in your head or in your hat. But how did it happen? I mean, should we really let our boreal subtropical fauna be the guardians of a major national library? Uh. Well, he was human once, of course. What? Really? All part of a magical accident. Very tragic, you see, but there it is. Very embarrassing, seeing him scratch himself in the reference section. Doesn't he want to be turned back into a human? Nope. Ha! Says he likes the long arms, the prehensile toes, and the right to scratch himself in the reference section. I say he just likes running round loose, not wearing trousers. I mean, I would. You may have a point there. Right, you are then. All right, well, let's talk to the Dean and the Bursar, because they do have separate uh, conversations. So, look, as an aged wizard, I mean, you know, as someone who's climbed to the very depths, is there any advice you feel you might like to pass on? I mean, a few words of guidance, perhaps to one who hopes to follow in your pointy footsteps? Ah, yes. Well, young fellow my wallpaper, well, I'd say that of all lessons in life, Always learn to expect the unexpected. Hmm. But if I expect it, then it isn't unexpected. Eh? Well, by definition, it can't be unexpected if it actually is expected. Quite right, my boy. Well spotted. In which case, my advice to you is to always expect the expected. Is that clear? I expect so. Nice, uh, nice turning around of the joke there. 
So, your faculty heads, the giants of wizardry, this is it. This is as good as life gets. Contemplating promotion? No, I'm contemplating a change of career. Listen, one thing I've always meant to ask, these, uh, these dresses we wear, are they, um, are they strictly necessary? Eh? The robes, lad, are symbolic of our dedication. You see, this is not so much a calling, a, a profession, as a condition of mind. By wearing long robes, we imply a somnambulistic state, an attitude in which we walk dreamily through this world with our minds occupied by higher things. Higher? Like, say, as high as this hat? Well, the hat, too. Its height employs loftiness of thoughts. Or it might imply that we should have let our mothers keep on dressing us. What's more, it keeps young whippersnappers like you from running off. Eh? Would you want to walk the streets looking like a refugee from a somewhat suspicious pencil factory? Point taken. <laughs> nice joke. Point taken. Is this all you do all day? Just sit and make a public nuisance of yourself? I'm reserving my powers. What powers? Well, for a start, I can read your mind. Really? What do you see? Not much. You must have the big print version. Ooh, sick burn, bro. Well, excuse me, I think there's someone calling me. Yeah, like anyone. All right, well, let's talk to the bursar. Actually, the bursar's conversation has uh, a lot of lore about the university. Let's talk to him, shall we? So, you're the bursar. What does a bursar do, exactly? Well, it's a very important job. Accounts, expenditure, occasional bouts of irrationality, the assessment of grants. Well, it, it sounds a bit... Well, boring, doesn't it? That's the job's main attraction, my surgical sock. These tenures are for life. So, since wizards are naturally extremely long-lived, that means the only way to get promoted is to assassinate your superiors. They've been popping off like mayflies around here for some seasons. <laughs> Sometimes we've got, wait for it, more wazards than wizards. <laughs> They're in no danger from me. I never really thought about promotion. Wazards, you see? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh well, my post is safe though. Who wants to claw their way up to the top only to become an accountant in a silly hat? Mark my words, folding trouser press. Survival is all a matter of identifying your proper niche. Preferably a niche well removed from anything anyone else finds desirable. That's actually a pretty good plan. Yeah, if you don't want people to bump you off to get promoted, just go for a safe position. For example, an accountant. Yeah, because the job is so boring, the bursa is in no danger of getting assassinated by other wizards. So you're the, uh... The bursa! Oh, thank heavens. I'd hate to have forgotten the name of someone useful. It's a bit harsh. Look, you're the bursa, aren't you? That's right. I do the finances, books and things, and I'm quite totally insane, you know. Any calculations you need, I'm your giant frog. But that's just accounting. Surely to hold a major position in a wizard's university, you must be able to perform magic. After all, that's what the place is all about. Magic is all very well, young sink disposal unit, but mathematics is the more powerful art. Oh, come on. You don't believe me? Very well, Mr. So-called Scented Furniture Polish. Care to watch while I make your grant disappear? <laughs> I love the Bessa's dialogue, because he's just, he's just mad. I mean, in the books, he has to take pills to help his nerves. Mostly because he's insane. Right, well, don't be a stranger. Cheers. Yeah, and all that he said about assassinating your superiors, that is true. So if Rincewind wanted a, a higher position, he'd have to kill whoever's above him. But he's never really thought about it. In fact, in the books, he takes the Bursa's advice to heart here, because uh, he becomes the assistant librarian. Of course, there's no point in him becoming head librarian. In fact, him and the librarian get along really well. Anyway, what's it? before we leave, let's check out this carcass. Ah, a swamp dragon, if my eyes don't deceive me. I thought these things were filled with explosive gas. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, that was a swamp dragon they were eating just there, and the carcass just exploded. Ah, a swamp... Yeah, try and examine it again, it won't explode on that last line won't play. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll learn more about Swamp Dragons later. Anyway, now that we've done talking to the faculty heads and we've got that staff, 
I think it's time we ventured out into the world. Uh, we're all be coming back to the university. There's just a few things we need from the outside world before we can get any other items. There is one more in the university, but like I said, we can't get that yet. Ah, now this one, this one I know like the back of my hand. The good old library door. Can you not see daylight coming through the door, Rincewind? Pretty sure this leads... Yep, outside. Yep, we are now in the university grounds. Uh, we can go behind the university. Uh, I think we'll just do that real quick. Quite frankly, I think I'm being led up the garden path. Yes, by the player, which is me. Okay, so we're around the back. What's this stuff? New improved wonder grow grows anything. New instant formula. Hmm. Okay, that sounds interesting. Can we take some? We can. Uh, can we put a rinse wind? I'm. I'm not carrying that. Seems it's too heavy. And um, what the hell happened to his voice there? Did a different actor do that line or something? Well, anyway, we've got some fertiliser. That doesn't work. Seems we can't use this door. Sod it! Another one of those doors without handles! Tradesman's entrance, I presume. I wonder what we traded him for. <laughs> nice gag. Oh, there's a window up there, too. Illumination is a fine thing. I wish I could see in. Yeah, we might need a ladder to get up there. Oh, there's another wizard. What's that stuff he's eating? What's this then? Prunes? Finest quality? Extra dark old bowel buster? Yuck. Yeah. Prunes. Personally, I quite like prunes. Anyway, this guy's an apprentice wizard. Um, I think Rincewind is technically a junior wizard, so this guy, I think, at the moment is beneath Rincewind. Good grief! I thought the apprentices were all kept tied to stakes. Why would they do that? Anyway, let's talk to him. Oh, before that, um, if you try and talk to him before you go and see the Arch-Chancellor, he won't speak to you. He'll just say, you need to go and see the Arch-Chancellor, and that's it. How do you open the gate? They've changed the wasp names. The hand wriggles. It's a whole new spell. So show me the new spell. Can't. The spell's a secret. And even if you could use the spell, Rincewind, you can't. Because A, you've got that spell in your head that blocks out any other spells. And you're rubbish at magic anyway. Nice weather. Since classes in wind whistling, rain making and lightning throwing are all scheduled for today, I think that's being a wee bit premature. You did that on purpose, didn't you, you little sod? So, this is it. You just... You just stand here all day getting a wage for eating prunes? Certainly. Someone's got to do it. It's a plum job. Oh, that was terrible. The hand wriggles, please. Yeah, yeah, right. Look, you just wiggle them like this. Oh, I see what's going on here. Like this. Yes, almost. Now try it like that. Like this. Right you are, son. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'd like a nice lie down. But what about the gate? Aren't you going to guard it? Oh, who gives them monkeys? Did you get the number of that donkey cart? <laughs> yep, yeah, you said monkey. <laughs> OK. What's that you're eating then? Prunes. Just a little nourishment to tide me through till lunchtime. Can I have one before I go? Having one before you go is the whole point of prunes. And no, you can't. Well, fine. Same to you, fella. Well, I'll catch you later then. Oh, 
Well, we've got a frog, we've got a lily pond. And now that we've basically tricked that apprentice into opening the door for us, we can now leave the university. Uh, what's this? Another senior wrangler in the making? Possibly, but we can take the frog. Definite senior wrangler potential in this slippery little blighter. We will need that frog later. There's things we'll need and things we won't need, but that's how point and clicks work. Picking up everything you can find. Actually, it's been a while since I had a bath. Oh. Uh, maybe you could get on that while we're not playing this game, perhaps, Rinsmond. Well, anyway, now that we can leave the university, let's try the door. You're going to kick it, aren't you? Yep, thought so. This is Ankh Morpork outside. Uh, this is a, a pretty accurate map of Ankh Morpork itself because there is an, an official map. So we've got the university here, we've got the palace there, there's the square, could go there, there's a street, there's an inn, park. do that from time to time as well, just appear and set fire to certain places on the map. So as I was saying, there's the shades, but we can't go there yet. If you try to, Rinsman will just say, I'll need a very good reason to enter the shades, and just leaves. Uh, I think, yeah, there's an alley as well. Um, I think the first place we want to go is the square. There's a lot to do in the square. So since we've got a lot to do, I think we'll save talking to the old timers for another video. So I'll just save up here. There we are. And when we next come back, folks, we will talk to the old timers. See you then. Bye. You know, I've always wanted to ring one of these.